Hey guys, so for this video, I want to talk about how you can lower your ping in Fortnite Battle Royale. Your ping is the number in the top left of your screen denoted in milliseconds. It stands for how fast your game receives a response from the server after sending out a request. For example, if you have 10 ping, that means it takes 10 milliseconds for the game to take out your wall piece after you click that button on your keyboard or controller. Now, as I'm sure you all know, your ping plays a huge part in how good you are at Fortnite. People on low ping can take walls with ease, while people on high ping constantly feel delays. The even the bigger problem with high ping though is that it's not easy to fix. You can't just buy better ping. If you're far away from the servers, then there's not a lot you can do other than physically moving. Well, at least that's what I thought until I came across the network optimization tips I'm about to share. These tricks alone have decreased my ping and helped tons of other people across the world on both console and PC. So sit back, relax, and pay attention as this is my complete network optimization guide. The first and most important tip I have is to play on a wired connection. I've talked about this a few times in the past, yet I still see comments from people playing wirelessly. In case you don't know the difference between the two, wireless is essentially your Wi-Fi. It's what your phone uses inside your house to connect to the internet. On the other hand, a wired connection is when your computer or console are connected directly to your router with a wire. That wire is usually an ethernet cable. The main reasons wired connections are 10 times better than wireless ones are speed, latency, and stability. Put briefly, an ethernet or wired connection allows for faster transfer of data from your computer to Fortnite. Your internet speed will always be higher over ethernet compared to Wi-Fi. Anytime you play on Wi-Fi, you're using a shared network. That means you're secured to the same connection as other devices in your house like your brother's smart TV or your mom's iPad. On top of that, since wireless signals only extend out a certain range, your connection will fluctuate depending on where your setup is. That's a lot of interference that will severely affect your ping. With your console or PC connected via ethernet, however, you get your own dedicated bandwidth. Nobody else is on your connection when it's wired. It's just your console or PC and your router. Way back when I was a junior in college, I played Fortnite on PS4. I also lived in my own apartment and connected my PS4 to the internet via Wi-Fi. If I'm not mistaken, I think I averaged around 20 to 25 ping in game. Nothing too crazy. Fast forward a year and I ended up bringing my PC back with me senior year. I was literally in the same building with the same internet, just this time I had a wired connection and I got hard zero ping. I'm talking booga level zero ping. I was taking walls first try, winning all of my box fights, and all I did to get that was plug an ethernet cable in. A simple $15 ethernet cable from Amazon. That's how important a wired connection is. Alright, but what kind of ethernet should you get? Should you get a CAT5 cable, a CAT6 cable, a CAT7 cable, or a CAT69 cable? My recommendation would be to go for a CAT6. CAT7s are currently the most powerful cables you can get, but you really don't need them for gaming. They're really only used in data centers. Additionally, CAT5s are made obsolete by the newer Cat 5Es. Cat 5Es can transfer more data and do it more efficiently. Cat 6s are better than Cat 5Es though, and there's not too much of a price difference. I just found a 20 foot Cat 6 Ethernet cable on Amazon that cost $8. Oh, and before I forget, everything above a Cat 5 cable can support gigabit internet. A Cat 5 can only reach speeds of 100 megabits per second, which is why I do not recommend it. The one and only drawback to using Ethernet is that you need to be near your router for it to work. If you're not in the same room as your router, or you don't have an Ethernet port installed in your walls already, then you're gonna have to go a different route. My first solution would be to buy Mocha adapters. The way Mocha adapters work is you plug one of them into your router with an ethernet cable, as well as the same one into a coaxial. Coaxial is the cable your TV gets hooked up to. You most likely have one in every room in your house. To finish the setup, you take the other Mocha adapter from the set, plug that into another coaxial near your computer or console, and stick the ethernet from your PC into that Mocha adapter. This will give you all the benefits of an ethernet without having to be on top of your router. Another thing you can do if you don't have open coaxes is to buy power line adapters. These are the solutions my brother used for years. Power line adapters are very similar to Mocha adapters, except instead of using coaxes to transfer data, they use electricity. To set them up, plug one end of your power line into your router with an ethernet, then plug the other one into your wall outlet. Repeat the same process with the second power line adapter and your PC instead of your router. Unfortunately, this will not get you the same exact speed as a Mocha adapter or a regular ethernet will, but it's still way faster faster and way more stable than Wi-Fi. Last thing before we move on is that upgrading your internet speeds will not improve your ping as much as you would think. Obviously, upgrading from 1 up and 1 down to gigabit internet will help a lot. As long as your speeds are faster than 10 up and 10 down, it will not make a difference. What will is buying ethernet cables alongside a Mocha or Powerline adapter if need be and setting up a wired connection. 
Let's move on to the advanced network settings. All credit for this part goes to my boy Adam X. Make sure you check him out for more ping tweaks and FPS boosts. To start this trick, you're gonna need to download and update your network drivers. For those of you that remember my old ping video, this was an important step that I did not include. I guess I just thought everyone would already have the most up-to-date drivers. Anyways, you can begin by pressing your Windows key and R key, then in the run box, type in ncpa.cpl. Once you click enter, this box should pop up with your different internet connections. You want to take note of the adapter it says under your ethernet. Mine says Realtek Family Controller, but yours may be from a different manufacturer such as Killer or Intel. By the way, if you don't see ethernet, just look for Wi-Fi. The reason you should know the name of your ethernet cable's manufacturer is because we're going to go onto their website and download their most recent drivers. I'll leave links down in the description for for each of the driver manufacturer pages I'm about to show. For killer networking, fill out your information for which device you have, click driver only packages down here, then download it. For Intel, press the download link that corresponds to your machine. The top is for a 32-bit system and the bottom is for a 64-bit one. Lastly, for Realtek, scroll down towards the bottom and press the download button next to what says Windows 10 Auto Installation Program. You'll have to put an email in before you download it. I just put in a random one. Also, fill out the CAPTCHA so the site knows you're not a robot. From there, go into your file explorer, hit downloads, and you should see the drivers that you just downloaded. I went ahead and downloaded the killer ones even though I have a Realtek Ethernet cable. For those of you with killer Ethernet cables, double click the killer driver, run the installation, and it should start installing. I'm not going to press next here since I don't want to fully install it, but all of you trying to do that should. Over to the Realtek download, and this time you're going to right click on it, and press the extract here option using WinRAR or 7-Zip. Both of those applications are free. After it gets extracted, open up the file, go to the Windows 10 folder, and drag the 64 or 32 bit folder onto your desktop. My PC is 64 bit, so I chose that one. Next, to actually update the drivers, right click on your Windows logo and proceed to your device manager. AdamX said that running the killer and Intel setup files should automatically update your drivers. That means this is just for real tech. Back to the steps, find your Ethernet connection down under the Network Adapters drop down, double click on it, hit the Drivers tab at the top, and click Update Driver. Press Browse My Computer for Drivers, browse on the right, then select your desktop and choose the 64-bit folder you dragged onto it. From there, hit OK, Next, and since I just installed them yesterday, it says the best drivers for my device are already installed. You guys will see a different screen where it starts updating with the moving green bar. By this time, your device manager should refresh, giving you all the advanced options we're about to change. To do that, double-click your adapter within the device manager, go into power management, and make sure allow the computer to turn off this device to save power is off. You do not want that box checked. After after that, head over to the advanced tab and you should see the settings we tinkered with in the video I talked about before. These are the ones a lot of you guys did not have, but because we just updated your drivers, you should have most of them. We're only going to change a few of these settings this time around. Starting with energy efficient ethernet, change the value on the right to disabled. Gigabit light, make sure it's disabled as well. Green ethernet, disabled. And power saving mode, also disabled. Depending on your driver, you may have different names for these things, such as ultra low power mode. You want to disable all the power saving mode features on on Realtek, Intel, and Killer adapters. Finish by pressing OK and exiting out of the Device Manager. To wrap up the video, I'm going to walk you through the download pack Adam supplied with 5 different ping tweaks. Almost all of them are registry changes, meaning they add, modify, or delete registry values and sublets from your windows. I've tested them all myself, they're all safe and work extremely well. In order to implement them, click on the lower ping folder and go to the second one down that says Disable Delivery Optimization. Double click it, press yes and ok. What this does is it disables background services from utilizing your bandwidth, thus preventing random spikes in your ping. Next, do the same thing for disabling the algorithm. Double click, yes, ok. Adam has proved disable this algorithm will improve your ping. Disable network throttling is very similar, so for the third time, double click, press yes, and OK. Second to last one is disable OneDrive Sync. This feature is completely useless, so you do want to disable it as well. Guess what you do for the last one? Double click, yes, and OK to reinforce your network priorities. The real last thing you need to do is go to the top and open up the adware cleaner. CodeLife has showed this step a few times in his videos. Once it's open, go to settings and enable all the basic repair actions. You want to make sure all the the settings look like this where the toggle is green. Also toggle off this option for usage and threat statistics. Finally, go to the dashboard and click scan now. Mine did not find anything because my PC is pretty clean, but for those of you with some weird stuff on your PC, press select all and clean it. That basically wraps up all the tips. If you experience any issues from the stuff you change, all you need to do is uninstall your ethernet adapter from your device manager. That will reset your drivers completely. Just don't forget to physically take the ethernet cable out of your computer after you uninstall it through device manager.
manager, then plug it back in for it to appear again. Overall guys, that is how to get lower ping in Fortnite Battle Royale. Huge thank you to Adam X for helping me with this video. I'll leave all his social links down in the description. I'll also be doing my best to try and answer any questions I have through DMs or comments. So if you enjoyed the video, do be sure to drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and to turn on post notifications. Shout out to everyone using code Jerian. we just hit 800k subscribers which is absolutely insane. I kid you not, I never thought we would grow this fast. I truly appreciate every single one of you. Otherwise, that's it from me and I will see you guys in the next one. Later. Awesome production.